Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. With the time being 6 p.m. on Tuesday, November 9th, 2021, I will call this meeting of the Webster School Committee to order. As a reminder, there were changes issued by Governor Baker modifying the open meeting law requirements given the COVID-19 pandemic, and certain COVID-19 measures that were adopted during the state of emergency have been extended, including those that allow public bodies to conduct meetings in a virtual forum, as long as the public has access to the meeting. This meeting has been posted on the district website with a Zoom link allowing the public to join. Another reminder, this meeting is being recorded both audio and video and will be posted on the district website. Just a quick note about this remote meeting. Once again, we, we did go in person, um, but we came to realize after we had our in-person meeting that the sound was not working in the conference room that we were in. So we've moved back to remote for the purposes of ensuring that we're capturing all that's being said in these meetings and making it as accessible as possible. So as soon as that is repaired, we will be back in person again. That being said, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the October 26th, 2021 meeting. I'll entertain a motion to approve them. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Approved. Thank you. So we're going to take this agenda a bit out of order. Um, Dr. Gogan is um, not able to join us at the moment. Um, but so I would like to take the next item on the agenda as the business manager report. Good evening, Mrs. Carangeli. Good evening. Thank you. And it's nice to see everybody tonight, even though we're back to the computer. Um, it's great to see your faces. Uh, the first item I have for you tonight is the school building committee update. Our building committee is scheduled to be held on November 17th. That's Wednesday. Typically, we meet on Thursdays. Um, it has been moved until Wednesday. Bartlett is having conferences on Thursday and another scheduling conflict. So Wednesday will work for everybody. Um, I'm not going to steal Dr. Gogan's thunder. Um, we are preparing again for the MSBA story of a building. She'll speak a little bit to that. And we are just really starting to narrow down options. Um, we've met in a couple of small groups about HVAC and athletic fields. Um, we're going to regroup with the building committee on that again on um, Wednesday night and start to really define those options uh, for an MSBA submittal in January. So we look forward to that. Things are moving along and um, we're making some progress. Are there any questions about that? Mrs. Prangley, can you repeat the date of the next meeting? Wednesday, November 17th. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And that is in person. Hopefully um, it, it's in person and it will be in the school committee room, just so you know. It starts at six o'clock if anybody's interested in attending. Thank you. Thanks. Um, the next item is the FY23 budget calendar in your packet. You should have received a budget calendar for the upcoming budget year. Um, we have started meetings and you can see we'll be very active over the next couple of months as we progress through the budget. Um, Dr. Gogan and I will be meeting with, um, starting meeting with uh, school ILT uh, teams to just talk about the budget process and um, how it all works you know last year and a half has been covid we've had new staff um so we're going to get back to the basics of building a budget talk about the priorities this is our opportunity to change things um and make any changes that are needed and really what their roles are in a budget so we're going to start uh next week and start working through and with principals and taking uh hopefully having some budgets come to you in early um, January. So we're working, we're getting there. It's a fun time of year for me. Um, a lot of people don't like budget, but for me, it's an exciting time because this is a real chance to make a difference and make a change. Any questions? None? Okay, moving on. Um, on a not so happy note, um, 
I have an update about our hot water tank at Park Ave Elementary. Um, as you know, our newest building that was opened in 2015 has been riddled with some trouble recently. We've had some HVAC issues over the past um, couple of years with just things starting to break and having to replace parts and everything already. Um, now our hot water tank is leaking um, pretty badly. Um, it seems like it's all rusted out around the bottom of the hot water tank. Uh, it is covered, the good news is that it's covered under warranty. So we reached out to the company and we did receive a new hot water tank um, as a replacement, but we have to cover the labor to install it. Um, to throw another curveball into the mix, um, it appears that when the building was built, it was kind of built around the water tank. So for instance, you walk into the back room where the boilers and the water tank is and you walk in and you have a double door. And that double door, if you go straight through the double door, you hit a boiler and then a second boiler and then you turn the corner and there's the water tank. And then that leads to a little hallway with a single door. Well, in order to get the water tank out, you either have to remove a boiler and take out a whole boiler, or you have to fit it through that single door. Well, it doesn't fit through the single door. So now we're looking at alternatives on how to get the old water tank out. Um, we're having some companies come in. A um, couple of one company wanted to take a boiler and actually move the whole boiler, disconnect it and move it. Another one feels that um, they can take out the frame of the single door and it should fit um, the measurements. If not, they'd have to take out a row of the concrete blocks in order to get the water tank out. So um, I guess what I'm saying is this is not going to be a cheap fix. Um, I'm looking at proposals and um, just to give you kind of a ballpark, um, they're coming back a little more than $15,000 on that, just in the initial. So it's not going to be a small repair. It's going to be a large repair. Um, and it just, you know, goes to show, you just don't know, even these newest buildings can have issues, um, unexpected issues, um, that's going to end up costing us some money. So, um, I'm working and continuing to receive proposals for that and reach out to companies to do the work. I'm actually having a little trouble, um, getting companies that want to come in and do that kind of work. So I'm going to have to expand out and get some larger, um, companies um, towards the city uh, and maybe uh, out in Boston area to come in and do that work. Any questions about that? None? Um, okay, next item, the next two items kind of go hand in hand. Um, the first one is the auditorium lighting at Bartlett. Um, as you know, um, we have, if you've been in the auditorium recently, um, you've noticed there's been some lights out. We use the auditorium quite frequently for school rental events for dance companies, um, usually around the winter time. And uh, once we hit June, our facilities are used every weekend uh, for dance recitals. Um, over the past year, we have been renting some equipment, um, borrowing some equipment to use for those companies. And um, we've received a quote to fix and update the lighting in the auditorium. Um, I would recommend that the, we make these repairs and that they come out of our school rental revolving account. Uh, that account has a good balance in there of about 50, as of today, it had $50,636 in that account. Um, this, these funds are raised by renting our facilities. That's what they're used for. Um, to uh, make any repairs and upkeeps of the building that are necessary for any events. So this is a, certainly a justifiable um, purchase to repair these lights. And I would recommend doing that. Um, also the second one, I'll just jump right onto that because it's in the same boat. It's the Bartlett High School athletic field, softball field and um, Bartlett uh, baseball field. Those two fields, um, if you've been out to them are really quite overgrown on the infield. They're full of grass. They're supposed to be dirt. And they're not supposed to be grass. Um, they really need to be edged and raked out. Um, 
Typically, you would think this is a spring project, but we can't get on the fields in the spring, early spring, because they're too wet and the equipment needed to do that is heavy equipment. Um, so uh, it is recommended to do that work now. And again, our fields are used constantly throughout the summer. Um, we have organizations who come in and use our field and our kids are playing on these fields. So I am recommending, I wanted to inform the committee that I'm going to recommend to go forward with these repairs and use the school rental money unless there was really any concern from com committee members tonight. Um, do you have any questions about that? No questions, no concerns. That's good news. Thank you. And in other updates, I just wanted to let you know that the end of year report was submitted on October 30th. So that has been completed and is in. And I want to thank the town accountant for um, getting me his information. He was really happy this past week. He was uh, officially able to roll over a munis and close out his books. So that is good news for us on the town side and school side. Um, and I think that concludes my report. Uh, I have nothing else unless you have any questions for me. Thank you, Mrs. Perangeli. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? No? Okay, great. Um, I do see that Dr. Gogan has joined us. I think there was some major traffic in her route home today. So it sounds like, Dr. Dr. Gogan, are you pulled over in a safe area somewhere, not on the side of the highway, I hope? I am pulled in a, a parking lot of a restaurant right underneath a, uh, a very bright light. And I will keep my camera off because it's um, not a great image of sitting in the car. So I apologize. Traffic was awful and I'm looking at the line in front of me and they're still not moving. So um, rather than miss the meeting, I wanted to um, participate uh, remotely even though you can't see my beautiful face. I'm gonna start with my um, personnel update. And um, I'd like to let you know that we have hired Marcial Vill Villages as the second shift custodian at Park Avenue Elementary School. He was filling in as a sub for us. And I'm, I'm proud to say that he's so excited to be here and uh, pleased to be working in a, the school district where his grandchildren go. We've also hired Jennifer Espino. She's our new COVID RN nurse that will be shared across the district. I'm pleased to let you know that she's bilingual and we certainly are uh, happy about that. Um, there have been some transfers. I'm very pleased to let you know that Rebecca Beaupre, who has been a paraprofessional since 2012 at Park Ave, is um, becoming the grade four teacher. We're very pleased to support her in this uh, career move and happy that she can be joining the fourth grade team with us. Michael Scott, who's been working for us, is now the groundskeeper at Central Office. He's moving over from Park Avenue Elementary School. We have received the resignation from Michaela Metcalf. She's a new special ed teacher over at Park Avenue. Uh, that resignation will be effective uh, beginning of December. As um, I've been sharing with you, we still have a number of open positions um, that we are actively trying to fill us along with many districts across the, the state and nation are finding it hard to fill positions, but the list is there for you to see. Uh, although uh, it's not on the agenda for you to vote on, I did wanna let the school committee know that I will uh, be asking at the next school committee permission to hire uh, an interim dean over at the Webster Middle School, in addition to the interim assistant principal that we're looking for. Um, I will be posting that as an anticipated opening and then asking for your um, approval at the next school committee uh, that will require a vote because it's not in our budget, but we do have um, the funds for that. I do want to just give you a quick update um, that uh, we have been seeing an increase um, in student behaviors uh, at the middle school and at the high school. And we are uh, taking all of this very seriously. It's not one solution to solving code of conduct behaviors, it's multiple solutions. And we've had many meetings and um, we're working on communication about that and consistency of following student handbook rules. Um, our number one goal in our district is to make sure that our students are safe. 
um, and that they can come to school and feel safe um, and learn. Uh, any questions before I move on? Thank you for that update. I know that um, this year, I think, has brought some unexpected challenges with bringing young people that have been home for a very long time back into the school building. And um, I, I don't know that any of us could have anticipated just how challenging that would have been for everybody. Um, and, you know, I think you mentioned the middle school and the high school, I would say probably the elementary school is presenting differently, but also the kids are probably having some, some difficulty with remembering expectations and maybe some even have made it to second grade with very little time having been spent in the classroom in kindergarten and first grade. So it's a unique set of challenges, I think, that are being faced across the district. Happy to hear about, you know, an interim dean and excited to hear more about some of the other strategies that we'll be implementing to address this. I know that um, the middle school has held um, some student assemblies to go over expectations and they're going to be looking at doing that again. I know that we did a dipstick on, you know, just about our suspension and discipline rates. Um, I think to date, there's been about 50 suspensions over at Bartlett High School, uh, but those 50 suspensions are um, involve 42 students. I know that there have been 13 in-house suspensions and 13 out of school suspensions over at Webster Middle School now. Um, but we, you know, we, we do need to have a consistent communication about um, what the expectations and what the consequences are um, for behaviors and use discipline as a teachable moment for our students. And, and for parents who may be listening, you know, we, we need to partner with families on um, making sure that uh, we do follow our stu student handbooks and that kids are, um, can come to school to learn. So that's a brief update on that. And I just wanted to let you know what our enrollment numbers were on November 1st. There are 592 students at Webster Middle School, 406 students at Bartlett High School and 712 students at Park Avenue. Next on my um, school superintendent's report is a, just a brief MCAS summary um, from the Webster Middle School. I know we have Ms. Peterson here. Uh, and the, the presentation is in your packet. Um, and it's very similar to the presentations that we've shown with the other uh, principals. Ms. Peterson, do you want to um, say a few words about your MCAS data? Um, good evening, everybody. So it's really nothing that we didn't uh, expect. Um, you know, again, with uh, a year, um, uh, the COVID year where we weren't tested, um, the data, um, you know, it's hard to look at the data with any consistency because we're missing, we're, you know, we have a gap in there. And we also have many students um, in 2021 who didn't take MCAS at all um, due to, um, even though there was an online option, um, they still had to come into school to do that. So many parents uh, didn't, um, didn't have students participate. So, so it's just a, a reminder that when looking at this data, you know, uh, it gives us some good information, but but there's also some information you have to dig deeper into to look at at the whys. So um, there are some good pieces, and uh, we see some rises in um, some areas and falls in others. So. Um, I can talk about what we're doing to remedy things, but I didn't know if Dr. Gogan wanted to talk more about specific data. Well, I just wanted the school committee to know what kind of action steps you're taking at the school with looking at this data with your ILT and then uh, teams. Um, because I know that we, um, as a district, were sort of dissecting data and looking at how attendance impacts student data, what the iReady data uh, in comparison to the MCAS data shows in comparison to the grades. And, and I know you've been doing some work with your staff around that, maybe just a brief little update on that. Um, Cause I know we will be coming back to the school committee um, as a district leadership team to 
uh, share some more of our data. Right, sure. So um, today we actually had uh, instructional leadership team. And so we looked at some, some different data rather than the uh, these charts that we're looking at now on the screen. Um, but we pulled out uh, the specific questions um, and looked at where students were falling uh, below state average in um, specific standards and questions. So the teachers are, will be bringing that to their department meetings next week and dissecting that even more. Um, one of the things that uh, in this data that we're looking at tonight that you also wanna keep in mind is um, I like to look more at the cohort than at the year because if you're looking at the screen now, the, the 2018 kids are now in 18, 19, 20, 20, um, 7th, 8th, they're a freshman now. And so the 2019 kids, those are our eighth graders. And so it would be, in, it's more important to look more at the cohort to see what those eighth graders do in this year and compare that, I think, because um, with different groups of kids, it's, it's hard to look at this data. So again, it's all in how you look at it and interpret it um, and the ways that you do. Um, so one of the things that you will see later when we um, talk about our school, our sustainable improvement plan is that we are focusing, our main focus is student achievement, obviously. And um, we are really focusing this year on tier one instruction. And what that means is what is happening in the general education classroom for all students. Um, we are really trying to ensure that all students are getting that, getting the same tiered one, tier one instruction. So we're trying not to pull students out for um, English language services um, and um, things like that and um, special education services. And we're looking at equity across the curriculum. As you know, we've adopted um, or re we're doing our literacy reset. So we are really focusing on um, using the study sync curriculum for English in grades six through eight. And that way, all classes are getting the same curriculum. So I'm not teaching the outsiders to my eighth grade class and Mrs. Perangeli is teaching, um, you know, Fiddler on the Roof. They're all teaching the same thing um, based on the pace of their class and the needs of their students, but all students are getting the same curriculum um, and the same across all of our, all of our core subjects. Um, we are also, as I have discussed before, we have incorporated a um, response to intervention or enrichment class every day. So for 30 minutes, every student gets, um, some people call it what they need, and that's our tier, tier two intervention. So this is where we're filling in these gaps of, um, whether it's lost learning or delayed learning. Um, so we have, you know, four to six groups in each class. One group might be working on phonics skills. Another group might be working on multiplication skills. Um, our um, excel accelerated learners are working on things like literacy, literacy circles and doing um, book studies. So, um, they're all getting, and that's when the English language learners are getting their pullout time. Um, and that is when special education students are getting their pullout time as well. Um, so those are some of the things that we are doing currently to look at improving um, academic academics at WMS. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. Any questions on that before I move on in my report? 
I was a little slow on the unmute there, Dr. Gogan. Thank you. Um, I, I have actually, I wonder if we might be able to revisit this and take a deeper dive into this data. Um, the slides were up and, you know, we were able to hear a lot about what's happening, but we weren't able to really dive into sort of where Webster Middle School is at currently with the MCAS scores and um, how that compares to state scores. So I wondered if we might be able to even perhaps table this and bring it back again. I had some questions about slides, but they were they were here and gone before I was able to hone in on them. Um, but I, I really think this is a good sort of introduction, but uh, for me to be able to wrap my head around this, I think we'll need significantly more time. Okay. We can certainly um, bring it back as a district leadership team um, and um, go through the slides. I know that we presented them differently this year, school by school, um, and you know, coming back to, to look at the state and where we are in comparison to the state. The one thing about the slides that are in your packet that is important to, to um, point out is the, the differences between our subgroups uh, within our own school. So there was some market differences in the gains that our um, L students um, didn't have compared to our non-L students and our special education students uh, certainly did not have the gains that our uh, non-special education students had. Um, and I think one of the things that we're trying to do with the literacy reset across the district is really ensure um, equitable access, um, no matter what type of student you are, um, and that you are provided um, strong tier one instruction at, at the grade level content and, and your um, accommodations and modifications are adhered to. So, you know, uh, we will certainly be, can come back, um, Ms. Sadecki, with um, more time to digest data. This is the chair. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Adamopoulos. If we are going to do that and be able to look at this data a little bit more closely, can we, uh, as Ms. Peterson said, maybe get that 19 cohort and compare it to the 21 so we can see maybe even district wide how kids have done um, cohort to cohort so we can see, you know, the improvement from similar, similar students? Yes. If that's possible? Yes. Thank yes, you. we can definitely do that. That's a great point, Mr. Adamopoulos. And also just to reiterate the, um, the comparison between where we sit and where the state sits with some of these scores and, and the distribution among the um, meeting expectations and not meeting and all that type of thing would be very helpful. Um, there were some areas on the slides that there wasn't information. I'm not sure if that's because there wasn't any information to include like L students in 2019 for grade five, just as an example, there, there's nothing in that bar chart for that area. Um, so that's just an example as flipping back to, to look at sort of where my questions were. There was a couple of areas where I was left wondering why, and I'm sure it's a very easy explanation, but um, again, I think further discussion would be really helpful there. Okay, and if there's no students in that, uh, in those grids, we didn't have either the students didn't take it or we didn't have enough to qualify for any reporting. So we can certainly re revisit that. I know um, I had mentioned at the last meeting that we have done a much deeper dive with the data at the district level and we have that to share as well, which may be some of what you're looking for, but we will Great. come back. Okay. Perfect, thank you. All right. So as uh, Mrs. Perangeli said, we're pretty excited about um, the story of a building, um, a Bartlett High School renovation project is being highlighted by MSBA. This is quite an honor. Uh, we've been selected because we're doing a renovation rather than a rebuild. And so we're preparing for our presentation, which will be given virtually across the state on December 8th from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Uh, we are in the process of putting together um, our presentation, which will include working with our architect, Ken Kovac, and a video crew to capture some of the existing conditions of Bartlett and um, to really focus on how a renovation project is going to help us transform the teaching and learning environment for our students. So they're coming into the buildings next week for that. And um, the flyer for the MSBA story of a building is in your packet. Um, and we're thrilled um, to be part of that. 
in my other updates, um, I am, as you know, your selected uh, representer for the CMC and SWEC uh, collaborative meetings. Uh, both collaboratives received good news that they will be receiving 75% of what they spent on COVID supplies. So they didn't get money the way um, we did in terms of COVID and ESSER funds. So they're thrilled to be getting that. Um, at my most recent CMC meeting, uh, we welcomed the new superintendent, Mike Lucas from Oxford. He's on, on the board as well. And like us, they're also finding it difficult to fill positions um, at their um, collaborative. They, as a board, we recently approved their request for additional staff, uh, for additional nurse, um, some behavioral staff and a school psychologist. Um, to help with maintaining a safe environment there and addressing the needs of the students. They are working on a new marketing uh, technique for their recovery program to increase enrollment. And the good news is they're in very good financial position. And that I think is due to their um, adding some more staff in their business office so that they can send out bills in a timely fashion and collect funds. Their total enrollment over at CMC is 397. And at this current time, Webster only has three students there. Uh, we also had a, a SWEC meeting and uh, the FY21 audit was given. There was, it was a great audit with no findings. We have seven students from Webster going to their various programs over there and the SWEC total enrollment is 116 students. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to the Samuel Slater um, Museum crew and Chris Robert for um, having a special day for Webster educators. Uh, we were absolutely thrilled to be going back into that building after um, seeing it in the middle of um, its creation to the end. And the interactive approach that was is given in this museum is just simply fascinating. Um, Webster's rich history is just amazing. Um, it's a, a museum that's gonna bring a lot of um, traffic into Webster. It's going to be used, I think, very readily by our teachers and our staff. And it's a really a wonderful uh, tribute to Webster's history in a very creative manner. Um, so if you, and when it opens, I strongly recommend uh, you to take a visit there. We were thrilled and I wanna thank them for wanting to continue working with us. Um, in terms of our literacy reset, we've had multiple meetings with the Hill managerial team in central office. Uh, there's a needs assessment survey and focus groups that are underway. Um, we're trying to streamline structures for when Hill coaches are on site um, and the early literacy coaches on site. We've had to take um, the measure of being a little bit more directive with our coaches to make sure that they're, all of our teachers have equitable access to them. So we've set structured schedules for them and we're, we're you know, maintaining flexibility. The, the goal is the coaches are there for our teachers to help them with implementing um, the literacy programs that we have. Um, and I want to just let you know that we continue to look at ways to bring programming, educational programming into our schools. We had a meeting with uh, Barbara DiGiromlo, um, the injury prevention specialist from Boston Children's Hospital that we've worked with for years. Uh, we of course did not work with her through COVID, but we met with her virtually with principals um, the other day and she's willing to bring in uh, the safety programs into the program. And she's even willing to bring in um, guest speakers. So uh, that's a work in progress and more will be coming on some of the free programming that MAFRE has connected us with, with Boston Children's Hospital. My monthly meetings have been occurring with WEA and um, we are continue to work collaboratively uh, to maintain safe environments for our staff and for our students and address needs as they come across the board to us. Communication is key um, with working with teachers and students and families. And so if there's one moral of the story, um, communication is, there's never too much of communication. So um, we continue to try to keep that communication two-way and flowing. 
With regards to the additional support that we receive from the SAUCE team, uh, they've been working with us on the literacy reset, the TAG grant goals. They helped principals with their school improvement plans and streamlining them to adhere to the accelerated roadmap goals that the state has put out. And uh, they're working closely with us on helping uh, principals with the use of data. And they've been working uh, in particular with uh, Ms. Peterson on uh, learning walks and um, getting the ILT members involved and having focal areas on those learning walks. The Bartlett High School National Honor Society induction was the best part of my year. <laughs> it was a wonderful, wonderful event. And I want to give some kudos to Melinda Doherty and our sitting NH NHS students who put together a fantastic ceremony to welcome the new, um, new inductees. Mr. Adamopoulos, I would be remiss if I didn't mention your wonderful speech. You certainly hit the mark with um, really life lessons for our students to kind of always remember, you know, showing up and doing hard work and protecting your reputation and making sure you surround yourself with a good network of people who can help you when you need help. I, I, I think you, your speech was wonderful and I was thrilled to see and feel all the Webster pride um, at the Bartlett High School ceremony. I'm looking forward to the uh, National Junior Honor Society in, induction this week. Um, so thank you all for, for that. I'll pause for any questions if there are any. We good? Okay. Through the chair. Yes, Ms. Millett. I guess I have a couple. One, um, were we informed about the Junior National Honor Society? Um, I think that went to our email. I didn't see it. I can double check and maybe I can text it to you. I, I can take a screenshot of it from my email for you. Okay. Um, my other question is this. We have a lot of um, openings for teachers. How are the students and in, um, instructional needs being met with these openings? That's a great question, Ms. Millett. And um, I think the... Um, Positions that are open right now are the special education positions that um, they have adjusted caseloads at the elementary school to ensure compliance to the IEPs. So I know Ms. Barris has worked with Mrs. Parmley um, and they've uh, made some adjustments um, to make sure that the, the current caseloads students are being, their needs are being met. Uh, with regards to the L teachers uh, for, um, Park Avenue and Bartlett High School. Um, they have not hired them, but uh, as far as I have been informed, they are still in compliance with their needs, um, but we are searching and interviewing um, and trying to fill them. We are also trying to fill um, remote academic tutors to ensure that when students quarantine, that uh, beyond the, the classroom teacher, there's another a level of support for students who may have to quarantine so that their learning can, if their health permits, uh, continue. So I think the major area of your question is special education. And I know Ms. Barris um, has been on top of that with Mrs. Parmley to ensure um, the IEP needs have been met. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions or comments from the committee? Doesn't look like there is. Dr. Bogan, did you have anything else you wanted to update, update us yeah. on this evening? Um, Ms. Mrs. Perangeli spoke about the uh, FY23 budget, and so I will skip over that. But I do want to let you know that we um, have applied for the Mass Grad Promising Practice Grant. Uh, that is a grant that would help um, us pay for some of the um, new re-engagement specialists. Webster's allocation would be about $20,000. So we submitted that grant. We haven't heard yet whether we'll get it or not. 
Um, and I do want to let you know that I attended the virtual Worcester County Superintendent's meeting and where the focus is on many of the things that we are facing in Webster, uh, staffing shortages, increased student um, discipline, and um, making sure that we can provide equitable access for students um, and getting them back on track. So I, 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 you know, um, I know that everyone in the district is working hard and everyone is putting, putting their best foot forward. Um, but you know, it is a tough year as you um, did so mention, um, Chair Siddiqui. And one last final thing from me is just a, a reminder to families to please fill out their verification forms that were sent home. Um, it is crucial that every school have up-to-date emergency contact and telephone numbers for our students. And again, a reminder to please send your student to school with a mask. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Dr. Bogan. Are there any other questions or comments from the committee? No, very none. We're jumping around a little bit on this agenda, but it looks like we're falling back into order here. The next item on the agenda is the principal's report. And joining us this evening is Ms. Peterson from Webster Middle School. Good evening again. Hello. Um, so we've had a couple of things going on uh, a couple of weeks ago, one of our English teachers, our seventh grade English teacher brought his um, students to the public library. Um, they walked over, uh, of course, with permission slips and um, were able to get library cards and take out books. Um, so a lot of them had never done that before, so they were very excited and um, some of them didn't know how to check out books or what to do. So it was a good connection to our literacy and also to some community building with the town library. Um, we have parent conferences next week, um, Wednesday in the afternoon from 12 to two and Thursday evening. We at the middle school are using um, myconferencetime.com to set up interviews, uh, interviews to set up conferences, excuse me. Um, and uh, teachers will be meeting in teams um, so that parents don't have to set up for different meetings. Um, they will meet with all the teachers at one time. Um, I had a food drive on the agenda, but I don't believe we're doing that at this point. Um, our NJHS induction is tomorrow evening at 6.30. And I know that um, uh, Mrs. Foley, the advisor had wanted to do a food drive, but uh, with the late induction, we will probably move that to um, December. And the final thing that I wanted to report on is um, we're working with the high school to get a presentation together for our eighth grade students about innovative pathways um, so that they can be aware of all of their options as they look at moving to the high school. So Mr. Um, Thomas has, uh, has some things um, that he's working on and we should have a date for that shortly, I hope. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? No, well, thank you for your updates. Um, the next item on the agenda is uh, the student representative, Colin, Colin Menarek. Good evening, Colin. Hi, good evening. Um, I don't have much tonight. I just wanted to start off with a sports update. Um, as of right now, all the fall sports have finished, but football. Um, I'll start with football. Football is unfortunately 0-9, and their final game is against Southbridge on Thanksgiving. Um, the boys soccer team finished with a record of 5-11. and The girls soccer team finished 2-14. Uh, and the girls cross country team unfortunately finished 0 and 6. The boys cross country team uh, finished unfortunately 0 and 7. And the golf uh, the golf team finished 1 and 13. And the volleyball team finished 5 or 12, 5 and 12. Um, yesterday, the seniors took their class photo outside on the soccer fields on 
and out uh, um, last block yeah, um, on Monday, and it went very well. Uh, Miss G said it was one of the best ones yet. Went very smoothly, worked out great. Photos came out great. Very nice out too. So it wasn't cold. No one was freezing. Uh, it was a nice little breeze and some sun outside. So it went well. And um, the National Honor Society, like Miss uh, Gogan said, had their induction ceremony for the new members of the 2021 and 2022 school year. Everything went well, went smoothly. Uh, thank you to Mr. Adamopoulos. He gave a great speech for all of us. And um, overall, great night, I would say. And uh, lastly, the MI ambassadors at Bartlett, Josie Corridori, Camden Heenan, and myself, uh, we ran a Socktober drive last month during October. And uh, we uh, got many donations of many pairs of socks and ended up donating half to the MIA and half to the Webster Dudley Food Share. And um, we went with Coach Frano, I believe two weeks ago, week and a half ago. And it was a great time. They really appreciated it. Uh, they were very thankful for what we did. And we, I believe, are now running a toy, starting to run a Toys for Tots uh, fundraiser with uh, the Webster Police Department. So hopefully that will just go, will it be even better than this? And that is all I have. Any questions? Um, through the chat. Yes, Ms. Blay. Colin, if we wanted to donate, when are you guys starting that? Are they, will you have them at games? Will you have them just at the schools? Do you know that yet? Um, I believe we're setting up a box in the office for now. And if you have a child at Bartlett, you can give it to them and they can drop it off in the office. And I believe we have to turn them in by the, um, the day after the first home basketball game. So I believe what we're doing is if you bring a toy in, you can get free admission at, so that you pay with the toy. Uh, we haven't uh, figured that out yet. We're working on it, just coordinating dates and when everything has to be in. But I believe that's what we're trying to do. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your updates, Colin. Does anyone else have any questions? No? Okay, well, thanks again. Uh, Thank the you. next item on the, on the agenda is under old business and it's the uh, COVID protocols update. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. Um, the COVID numbers are not detailed in, in your packet tonight um, because we, I did not get a chance today to um, put them together and send them out, but they will go out to the families. But I do have um, this information on this past week. We are seeing an increase in kids um, getting sick. Our nurses processed 52 um, sick children and dismissed them. There were 101 negative test results this, in the last seven days. 31 students were quarantined from school, from a school exposure, and 14 more from exposure outside of school. All of that happened in the last seven days. So um, although we were seeing a decline uh, this past week, we we're seeing an increase uh, that will, the dashboards will go out tomorrow to our families. I do wanna let you know that um, Jen Sullivan has been working as a consultant for the town um, to help the schools with COVID. Uh, Friday, November 5th was her last day. I want to give a public thank you to Jen for all of her support through the COVID. We're pleased to be welcoming Camille Griffin as the new Board of Health Director. Uh, she'll be taking over and working with the schools. And um, we look forward to working with her. I want to uh, publicly give a shout out to our school nurses. Um, as we have said, uh, this is a different year, um, stressful year. I want to publicly recognize and thank Kathy Pepin, Daniel Jalbert, Stephanie Paletta, Rachel Taylor, and Sarah Phillips for their incredible efforts with managing just the typical nurse things that happen and uh, COVID contact tracing in the schools and ensuring that the things are done very quickly. Um, and I know that they are looking forward to welcoming Jennifer uh, Espino into her their team. So I want to thank them. 
Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm, I will. I, I just want to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say I'm, I'm getting a, a, um, a message. The numbers that I just shared with you were just at Park Avenue. <laughs> so things are very busy um, in the schools in terms of COVID contact tracing. And um, we're doing our best to keep um, our kids in school. And uh, I think we're doing a great job. Thank you to our nurses. I would like to reiterate um, my thanks to the nurses for all that they're doing from the normal busy office days of children being sick or injured while they're at school to, to these multiple additional duties that they're um, being faced with. So much appreciation. Uh, and thank you for the, I understand Dr. Gogan, these uh, COVID numbers are constantly evolving and what's accurate one moment is no longer accurate moments later. So appreciate all of the information that you share with us. I know I get it weekly. So um, I'm sure we'll be getting more information soon. Well, we did have eight um, student cases this week and zero staff cases. So um, and the data that I did give you that was just at Park Ave. But we're we're uh, um, and I also did fill out the application today to have a free mobile clinic for um, our students who can get vaccinated now. So um, we're hoping to be able to uh, provide that as another resource to our uh, students and families. So I will keep you abreast of that. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the monthly report on fundraising applications. We have um, the Bartlett um, boys basketball team who are very busy with a meat raffle and a 50-50 raffle and selling ads for their basketball programs. We have uh, student ambassadors, as uh, Colin said, doing Toys for Tots. Our medical careers are selling carnations. Uh, and our Music Boosters Club um, is in the, doing their butter braid uh, sale. Thank you. And just a reminder, it's the role of the school committee to review fundraising, but not to approve them. So thank you for sharing that information with us. Are there any questions or comments from the committee regarding either the fundraising applications or the COVID protocols update? No? Okay. The next item on the agenda under new business is the acceptance of donations of winter coats, 27 of them, from It Starts at Home. I want to give a shout out to Jill St. Cyr and the It Starts at Home organization. Um, she had reached out to us to, uh, for us to work with our guidance counselors and have, she has donated her and her donors 27 beautiful new coats that will go to students who need them. She's also working with us um, on a sneaker drive for students who need sneakers. Um, and we're also working on um, holiday gifts for students who are 14 and under who may need them. So we'll, you'll be hearing more from the wonderful donations from the It Starts at Home um, organization, but we did receive the 27 coats and I wanna thank them and have you accept that from her. Thank you. And thank you to Jill St. Cyr and the folks from It Starts at Home uh, for providing these to our students. Are there any questions or comments about this donation from the committee? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to accept the 27 winter coats that have been donated by It Starts at Home. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Laura, would you pull the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparata? Yes. Member Millette? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the acceptance of donation of seven tickets to the Hanover Theater for the 18 to 22 program. And that's from an anonymous donor. Uh, this donor has asked to remain anonymous and the monetary value of the tickets is $119. And um, the students are going to see um, a presentation of A Christmas Carol on December 17th. Just another wonderful way of how kindness matters in Webster. Um, so I would ask the school committee to accept this anonymous donation to allow our 18 to 22 year old students to have an adventure of seeing um, a Christmas carol. What a beautiful donation. It's beautiful theater and great experience 
Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Well, thank you um, to whoever it is out there that, that made that donation. I will entertain a motion to accept it. So moved. Second. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Millette? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Motion passes. And the next item on the agenda is the Webster Middle School Improvement Plan. I will just preface this by saying that Ms. Peterson has been working with um, the SSOS team um, who uh, are tasked to work with us because we are a turnaround school. And this school improvement plan is also their TAG uh, turnaround action plan. Um, so they work together on sort of streamlining goals under three large areas of um, ensuring uh, strong on grade, on grade level instruction with just in time scaffolds. Another um, focus area was the continuous monitoring of student understanding. And the third area, bear with me, I'm in the car, um, is uh, fostering a sense of belonging and partnership. Those three highlighted areas align um, with the school's, the DESE's new accelerated roadmap. Um, this is a simplified plan, but I will state, and then let Ms. Peterson speak to it, that um, there are other areas that they, the school is going to be working on. It's just, this is the areas that they're going to be measuring and, and um, providing updates on. Ms. Peterson, do you want to speak about this process? Sure. So um, really, we wanted to simplify the improvement plan so that it didn't just become another um, document, um, but it, it's a document that we will be following and referring to and that, um, that our staff will be utilizing. So really, the overarching goal is um, student achievement. And to get to student achievement, the other, other goals funnel into that. So by looking at that data and how we um, use instruction, um, and then um, looking at the social emotional piece, because as we know, if students uh, feel welcome and comfortable at school, then they are more apt to learn. So again, our overarching goal is student achievement. Other questions? Are there any questions from the committee? Through the chair. Yes, Ms. Millett. I, it, mine is not a question, but a comment. Um, I would like to see us add to our vote that all three principals present an update on their school improvement plan and three month intervals, so at least in three months to give us a brief update about um, progress or issues with their school improvement plans because they're very important to the progress of the school. So Ms. Miller, it sounds like what you're proposing is that um, we invite the principals to come back within like a 90 day period to provide an update on the progress? Yeah. Okay. Um, is I think that makes sense um, just from the superintendent's perspective. I, I, I think um, one of the reasons the plans have been simplified is um, that we want to be able to achieve our goals. And if you have 500 goals, you're not going get to get to all of them. Um, so I do like that idea, Ms. Millett, of having the um, principals come back with the data and how they're measuring um, and what they're reaching. And I, I think that folds in nicely with also looking at the MCAS data and other data, such as 
iReady benchmark assessments or attendance data or um, the number of students um, failing classes. So I think it folds in nicely together. So I'm in support of that. Thank you. Is there, there isn't any motion required for something like that. We'll just agree that, no. that we'll revisit this. Yes, Dr. Kogan. I, I don't think you need a motion. I think we can we can certainly make sure that that happens. Okay. Any other comments or observations based on um, the school improvement plan? Um, so I guess my question actually, Ms. Millett, I think you make an excellent point about revisiting this. Um, these, these goals seem to me, at least from where I sit, to be on target. Um, and I wonder if we can, depending on our progress over the next three months, even be, get a little bit more aggressive with some of these goals regarding communication and engagement and that type of thing once we are able to implement it. I know it's been an extremely challenging year on a lot of different fronts. So um, I definitely am in support of creating goals that are measurable and attainable, but then also stretching to, to you know, have, have goals that are, we're going to need to really stretch to work and, and achieve. I agree. I would also like to see more parent and teacher input, not just agreement of a written product, but have them actually have some input. That makes sense. Did you have thoughts on how that would be? I don't mean to put you on the spot. If it's no, not at this point, that's perfectly fine. We're going to revisit it, but. Well, originally these committees were formed because I was on many of them over the years. They were formed to have administrators, teachers, parents, sometimes communi community people and a, a student representative on them to help bring out uh, and discuss what the, they th all thought school needs were and to help write the plan. And it's kind of turned around into the plan is written and then you show it to teachers, but I think we need to start to go back to get more opinion and get everybody's perspective about what they see so you can look at a bigger picture. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So having more perspectives and, and um, therefore more input in the creation of these plans will um, be important. Thoughts or comments about that? Dr. Gogan, Ms. Peterson. Ms. Peterson, you have your hand up. Yeah, so we, um, we do uh, have our school council, which meets um, every month. Uh, we happen to meet tomorrow, actually. And we have all of the, all of the constituents that Ms. Millette just mentioned. We have teachers, I have a student rep, I have a community member. Um, and uh, so unfortunately, because we are a turnaround district, um, you know, our goals have to be pretty much aligned with, with uh, what the state is helping us with. But I did, but we did um, review our, our plan prior to meeting with the, with the SAUCE team um, back in uh, May. So we had reviewed our old document and re rewrote it and then aligned that information with the SAUCE team combining this new document. So the Webster Middle School, I can't speak for Bartlett or for Park Ave, but we certainly have had input from all, all uh, entities and constituents. Thank you for that clarification, Ms. Peterson. It sounds like some of these goals or many of these goals um, are, are sort of prescribed based on the growth areas for the school itself. But maybe when we get into more specific objectives and outcomes, that that's where we may be able to get more input from the constituents. Or is that accurate? Um, yes. Yes. One one other thing that I just would like to mention is that we did do um, some surveys to families, uh, just 
the surveys around what they felt um, the ESSER funds should be used for. Um, and many of the things that came back, which I did share at a previous meeting, um, kind of folded into and underneath some of these goals. But uh, I think your point, Ms. Millett, about the purpose of a school council and what their role is in terms of school improvement plans um, is, is very important and that the principals um, should be meeting with those school councils to take a look at um, their goals and how they're meeting them and collect feedback at those meetings. And so I know that Ms. Peterson has been meeting with her school council um, on that. So, I, and there'll be more to come in three months. So we can be tracking um, how we're doing. Thank you. Are there any further questions or comments related to the Webster Middle School Improvement Plan? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the Webster Middle School Improvement Plan as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee? Lori, drop down poll if it's all right with you. Um, Ms. Oh, Blythe? thank you, Ms. Grangeli. <laughs> Ms. Blythe? Yes. Ms. Naparata? Yes. Ms. Millett? Yes. Mr. Adamopoulos? Yes. Chairperson Siddiqui? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, I have my improvement plan open and not my agenda, so forgive me. Um, well, I think that sort of closes things out. The next item on the agenda is the review transfer of signing and signing of warrants, bills, payroll, and vouchers. Um, Mrs. Perangeli, you need some of us to come in and, and sign things. It was so nice when we were passing those binders around a couple weeks I ago. I know, it was so much fun. <laughs> um, actually, I saw Miss Millett today. She signed the warrant, so I would just need you to come in and sign payrolls, please. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Mrs. Perangeli, could you pull the committee, please? Miss Blythe? Yes. Miss Millett? Yes. Ms. Naparata? Yes. Mr. Adamopoulos? Yes. Ms. Siddiqui? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night, Thank you. Good night everyone.